Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture of process modeling and simulation and the module is related to the distillation column. So in our previous video, which was lecture number 53, we had simulated the shortcut distillation column and let me tell you that we had taken feed as 25 degree centigrade, 2 bar, 1000 kg mole per hour with mole fracture of methanol water as 0.5.5 each. Then we had taken the shortcut distillation column conditions of reflux ratio of minus 1.3, methanol recovery 0.99, water recovery 0 0.01, water is heavy key, methanol is light key, light key means high volatile, heavy key means comparatively lesser volatile. And these two specifications were of top product. Condenser pressure 1.9 bar, reboiler pressure 2 bar, condenser specification total condenser, and we had also tested it for partial condenser with all vapor distillate. But now our today's activity is to take the conditions or these results which are of shortcut distillation column to proceed for rigorous distillation column. The shortcut distillation column is basically based on Win Underwood Gilliland equation. So it gives you the shortcut calculations, but for the rigorous model, you have to always choose the rigorous column. So in going to the columns, this is the red frac, rigorous two or three phase fractionation for single columns, models, absorbers, strippers, etc. So click it, paste it over here, and then do the corrections again. Material stream. This is the feed stream which is at inlet. Now, if you see, there are two reds. This red shows that liquid distillate. You want only liquid distillate, you will click here and you will connect a stream over here. If you want a vapor distillate only, then you will click here and paste a stream over here. And if you want both vapor and liquid, or if it's a two phase mixture, then you will connect both these streams. But in our today's activity, this is related to the liquid distillate because we have selected here total condenser. When it's a liquid distillate, it means total condenser. When it's a vapor distillate, it means partial condenser with all vapor distillate. And if it contains both, then partial condenser with vapor and liquid distillate. Click it, connect it, and this is the reboiler or bottoms connection. So I will simply align it. Now we have to make sure that the conditions of S4 are same as that of the S1. So what we will do, we will double click on S4, 25 degree centigrade, 2 bar, 1000 kg mole per hour with mole fraction of methanol as 0.5 and water as 0.5. So once after specifying the feed, our next task as always is to go to the block. So we will double click on it and you can see there are three tabs on it. Configurations, streams, pressure. These are not ticked. Well, this reboiler is already ticked. Calculation type. There are two types of calculations available. Equilibrium and rate based. So we will tick equilibrium. There is are no rate calculations or chemical reactions involved in it. Otherwise, it would be a reactive distillation type. Number of stages. Obviously, we will take it from here. Number of actual stages are 16.969 and I have told you in the previous video that if it even 16.01 we will go to the next digit means 17. So if you round it off it's obviously 17 as well. So click 17 condenser type is total. If you see total condenser liquid distillate is at bubble point. If you select any other type partial condenser or partial vapor you will get a consistency error you will obviously click no because you have specified or connected it with liquid distillate. If you had connected it with vapor distillate, there would be no issue over here, but obviously it will be total. The reboiler type, there are two types, kettle, thermosiphon or none, means no condenser, but we will discuss it later. Valid phase is obviously vapor liquid and then there are different conversion schemes, standard, petroleum, Strongly non ideal azeotropic cryogenic, for example, air separation system, azeotropic ethanol water system. So, for there are different convergence methods, but as a start, we will take standard. When there is one condenser and one reboiler, then we have to specify two operating specifications. If there is one condenser but no reboiler, we have to specify only one condition. 
And similarly, if there is no condenser but a reboiler, then we have to specify one condition. And if there is no condenser, no reboiler, then you do not need to specify any operating condition. So you have to keep this rule in your mind that these operating specifications are dependent on the number of condenser and reboiler. If there are two, basically condenser plus reboiler means two, then two specifications, one, then one specification and if zero, then no specification. Now distillate rate, you already know from the previous exercise that it's 500k mole per hour. You can specify various informations over here. You can even specify distillate to feed ratio. And if you go to this results, this distillate to feed fraction, it is a molar value. It's 0.5. You can also specify it as well. And then the second type of the specification is reflux ratio. It's better to give reflux ratio and distillate flow rate. Or in some cases, you can give bottom flow rate or you can give duty. But when you are starting, it's a first exercise. It's better that you specify the top product flow rate and the reflux ratio. And obviously, this reflux ratio, which you have calculated over here or which Espen has given to you, it is in mole. So what I will do, I will simply control C and control V. So this has become tick. It means it doesn't require any other condition. Go to the streams and here you have to specify only one value that is of the feed stream. If you go back here and see it is 12.1913. So if you round it off, it will become 12. So you have to specify it as 12. Now there are, you see conventions above stage, on stage, vapor or liquid. What does that mean? So this is the Espen help and here you can see I have entered feed convention, feed stream conventions, above stage, on stage, on stage liquid, on stage vapor, decanter for three phase calculation. But obviously we are not dealing with the three phase calculation right now. When it's above stage, it means that red frac introduces a material stream between adjacent stages. If you see this is end stage, in your case, it is 12th stage because you are introducing feed on the 12th stage. And this one is the 11th stage. So what you do in the above stage convention, the feed enters here, the vapor goes up, the liquid goes down. Means the vapor will go to the 11th stage and the liquid will goes to the 12th stage. When you say on stage, then the mixture or the feed goes to that specified stage. But the flashing phenomena takes place if you have specified the hydraulic conditions. Now what are the hydraulic conditions? We will discuss it later. And similarly, on stage liquid and on stage vapor, these are also the same. So, this is the basic difference between all these feed conventions. So, we will select above stage because we do not need to specify any hydraulic conditions to cause the flashing phenomena. Then go to this pressure. There are two types or two ways of specifying it that either you specify condenser pressure, for example, if you specify condenser pressure as 2. It means in condenser, it will be 2 bar and in reboiler, it will be 2 bar. If you specify 1.9, it will be 1.9 bar in condenser and 1.9 bar in reboiler. But if you want to specify the pressure drop, what you do? You will go have to go to either column pressure drop or stage pressure drop. If you know the stage pressure drop, then you should specify it. Or if you know the column pressure drop, then you should take it and specify. Obviously, we know that it's 0.1 bar. If I specify it as 0.1 bar, it means 1.9 bar in condenser. Then coming down, 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 down and 1.9 plus 0.1, 2 bar in reboiler. So that's how it will operate. If you specify it as, for example, 2 bar, then it will be 2 bar in condenser, but 2.1 bar in the reboiler and the feed pressure is 2 bar. So what it will give? It will give you an error or a warning that the feed pressure is lower than the stage pressure. Because obviously at reboiler stage or even some stages above it, the pressure will exceed than that of the feed pressure. So obviously 1.9 bar in condenser, 0.1 bar total pressure drop, 2 bar in the reboiler, 1.9 plus 0.1. This is one way of doing it. What is another way of doing it? We will discuss it in the next video. So once after specifying these, the run button is active simply run it and once after running results are available your first task is to 
check the stream results whether you have achieved required priorities or not so you can see the mole flow is same now the mole fraction or oh, that's our difference you needed 0.99 recovery or 99 mole percent methanol in top product while it is currently 94.8 and similarly you wanted 99 percent water in the bottom which is currently 94.8 so one way of achieving it is to do hit and trial and so on but what's the purpose of doing simulation or using simulation software if you have to do the hit and try so Espen provides you the advantage of using design specification if you take it up go to the specifications and this one is the design specification click on it new click on it and you have to specify the design specification what type of design specification you want to define mole purity mass purity recovery flow stage temperature distillate flow bottom flow reflux ratio what is your requirement obviously our in this case is the requirement to achieve 99 mole percent methanol so what we do mole purity target 0.99 of product stream it's not an internal not decanter it's a product stream then you need to go to this components and of which component obviously you want methanol and these are the base components you can even take it pick all over here and even if you do not specify this it's okay as well then go to this feed product streams which stream the top product stream the s5 stream so again take it over here you can even simply click this one or double click on it after specifying this first design spec has been specified then go to this vary and which parameter you want to vary you can vary maximum of two parameters because with the parameters which you have specified over here these two parameters in configurations these two specifications in con configurations you can only vary these two you cannot vary any other than these for example if i want you to vary reflux rate it will give you a consistency error that you have not specified it in configuration you cannot override it so the best thing is to specify reflux ratio and give it 0 0.01 to 10. now why i'm taking this you can even take it as 0 0.01 to 5. you can take it as 1 to 5. but if you take 1 to 5 the problem will come because your reflux ratio was in 0 0.712 so it's better that your starting point should be below the actual value the original value so once after doing it simply run it to see whether your required purity for methanol has achieved or not and you see results are available when results are available it means your required purity has been achieved so go to main flow sheet click on stream results and you can go here to mole fractions and you can see that for methanol 0.99 mole purity is achieved and by virtue of methanol even water purity has been achieved means for water you do not need to specify another design spec but it, this is not always the case in majority of the cases you need to specify design spec for this product and this product as well but this is our first exercise the simpler exercise and you can see with one design spec and with one vary we have achieved our required results but in the next exercise or in the next video we will see that we will need to specify two design spec to achieve our required results so that's how you simulate the rigorous distillation column in aspen plus that's it from this lecture thank you so much